What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now today, hey, we got the 67th IPL match of the season. We are, how many more games do we have? We have three more games, I believe, until the playoffs begin. We're in a race to see who will win that fourth position. Obviously, this helps RCB. They now go into fourth position after a win against the leading table leaders. That doesn't make sense. But it does, in my mind. The Titans, they go down. Look, they were trying a couple of new things. You know, obviously, they've already qualified. They're already the top team. So it's not like they had to go out there and prove anything, really. Um, and they kind of just said to RCB, here's a win. So you like to see that if you're an RCB fan. We have to go through some big things. And now I just realized player of the match is kind of revealing what happened. But... Hey, I mean, there's no better time to start and the kickoff than get straight into the player of the match. The man himself, King Coley. Virat Coley, player of the match, 73 of 54 deliveries. His best knock of 2022 so far. And I think this would be his best knock. I can't remember another time in the IPL this season that he scored more than 70. Um, so 73 or 54. It looked like his most composed innings. You know, he's had a few half centuries this year, but most of them have come at, you know, like a runner ball um, sort of thing, just in the game situation. But this time, he got to go out there, chase down a total, and remain out there till almost the very end. It would have been a massive confidence boost for him. And I tell you what, we've seen some old Virat vintage Coley shots um, in last night's innings. There was, a, there was a few cover drives that made me feel very good inside. There was um, this one shot that he hit straight over the bowler's head. I, it might have been Kish... Uh, it was either Kishaw or Ferguson, I think, that was bowling. Um, but he hit it straight over his head, and I thought, yeah, Coley's back. So, hey, you love to see that if you're, <laughs> if you're an RCB, if you're a Coley fan, if you're a cricket fan, you love to see it. Um, but, hey, he wins player of the match. Deserved. Let's jump straight into it. The Titans into bat first. Um, again, you know, no changes with their 11. I don't think. I mean, I think Kishaw might have came in. Ferguson came in for uh, Alzari Joseph. But I think that's really... No, Kishaw was already there. So, yeah, Ferguson came in for Alzari Joseph. Um, both, uh, both can bowl quick. Both bowl very short and wide. And crap in the IPL. So, to be honest, I don't really think it matters because both are extremely similar bowlers, but I'd probably rather Ferguson just because at least he has the potential to bowl like a good bouncer or a good Yorker every now and then when you get someone like Alzari Joseph. And with all due respect, not in, not in Indian conditions is he going to thrive. Um, that's all I have to say. But it's good to have backup. All right, the Titans, Rinamad Saha, 31 of 22, looked good early. Ran himself out. You don't like that. Faf Duplessis, though. Great run out. Picked it up and pinged it straight at the stumps. Gets rid of man for 31. Schutman Gill, one for four. It just yeah, it couldn't get going at the start. Um, Saha took up a lot of the strike early. And it just seemed to put Gill in a position of not being able to literally play cricket by the looks of it. Uh, Matthew Wade in at number three. Now, this is a big talking point out of this game. Matty Wade, I mean, he's playing for his spot in the team. He has not scored many runs all season. He would be the first person to know that he's had a pretty average year um, in the IPL. But he's given his chance at number three again. You know, he was opening. Not anymore. You're in at number three now. So it's good to see they're choosing Matthew Wade over... Uh, What's his name? Not VJ Shank. Wait, is it VJ Shank? Bro, I don't even know. I can't even remember the guy's name now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. He should not be playing another game. Um, but Matty Wade, the controversy, if you didn't see the dismissal, I mean, he took a chunk out of the ball. He hit it straight into his pad. He was given out LBW, reviewed it straight away. He knew he had hit it. The replay clearly showed that Matthew Wade had almost taken a chunk of the ball with his bat. The ball deviated and spun the other way, and the umpire still gave it out. So, yeah, I can't blame Wadey. If you've seen his reaction, he was pretty pissed off, and I can't blame him. You know, this is arguably someone's IPL career. This is someone's money on the line. Like, this is this is big. Th this is the team's win on the line. Matthew Wade wouldn't give a shit about the other things. He'd be thinking about 
I was in a great position here to get some runs for my team to try and get a win. That's all he would have cared about, about getting the win and doing the best for his team. Couldn't do that. The umpire seriously needs to step up. The DRS needs to be upgraded. I'm sorry, but the DRS cannot take five fucking minutes of them looking at the same, the same replay six times, but they can't go to another angle, which clearly would have shown that Wadey hit it. I mean, that's just like local county cricket in England levels. Like, that's just embarrassing stuff. And it goes for around the whole world, you know, um, umpiring a DRS. Stop it. Like, seriously, I don't know why we're getting people with half a brain to do the DRS, but seriously, you could put my nan in there who wouldn't have a clue what she's doing and just press random buttons, and she would still have a better job at what she's doing. Um, ridiculous stuff. Wade, he should have been out there. He was looking his best knock so far. Um, I know he scored like a couple of 40s this year, but he built himself a nice platform, hit two fours, hit a six. He was striking them well. And then was dogged. The umpires did him dirty. Hardik Pandya, the skipper, back in some form. And I was a little bit worried for Hardik. You know, he's had a couple of lean games in the last few after such a great start to the season. Now, just before the playoffs, he's getting himself under some form. Coming in at number four, which I think is a great position for him as well. Uh, 62 off 47, four fours, three sixes for the man Hardik Pandya, the skipper. Him and Ashish Nira were just laughing, like, all of yesterday when they were batting. Like, they, they kept panning the camera to him and Ashish Nira up um, in the in the coaches, you know, area. And they were just laughing and, like, telling jokes the whole time with Rashid Khan. And I'm like, bro, do they, do they know there's a cricket game being played on? It, it's just the relaxed environment. And, and it's no surprise why... They're the number one team in the competition. David Killer Miller finished off with some late runs. 34 off 25. Three sixes. Tawat Tia two. And Rashid Khan 19 off six. He is an all-rounder. And he needs to start being respected with the title. Bowling all-rounder. Shit, you can call him a batting all-rounder if you want. But, uh, oopsie. 19 off six. One four. Two sixes. A strike rate of 300 and goddamn 16. That's, that's all you can ask for from a tail ender. All right, the RCB bowlers, um, you know, reasonably good with the bowling, except for one guy. Um, and unfortunately, we're going to have to start off with him. Siddharth Cool. So Siddharth Cool was brought into the team for Muhammad Siraj. Um, you guys know I'm, I'm a big Siraj fan over here. We don't, you know, we don't like to disrespect good players over here. Is uh, I didn't see the reason why um, Siraj was replaced in the team, but this was a must-win game. They're lucky they got the win, but bringing in Siddharth Cool, who I don't think has played more than two games all season, to replace Siraj, who is one of India's best bowlers in at least red ball cricket, um, it had me confused. I know he hasn't had a great season. I know he can be very costly with the with the white ball. But he still gives his heart. He gives everything Siraj. He would have wanted to win this game and bowl a lot better than Siddharth Cool would have wanted. That's just my opinion. But, yeah, I really, really hope they bring back Siraj um, if they make the playoffs. Because Siraj has toiled and worked so hard all season just to be replaced by Siddharth Cool, Who then gets put for none for 43. He got hit for about 22 off the first over of the game. And that could have seriously started them off and, and lost the game from there. So they've, they're probably lucky the man didn't cost them the game. Um, Shabazz Ahmed, none for 15 off two. Josh Hazelwood, two for 39 off four. He just continues to take wickets, the big fella. This might be another um, interesting opinion that people might like. Let me know what you think. But I think Hazelwood's the best white bowler, bowler in the world now. That can go for T20. That can go for ODI. You could even say it goes for red ball cricket as well. But actually, isn't he ranked number two as a T20 bowler? I think he is. So that's not an unpopular opinion at all. I'll edit that out. That was bad. Hey, Glenn Maxwell, one for 28 or four. You know, any time he can roll the arm over four times is probably a few too many. But he took one for 28. It's all you can ask. Uh, Lom Raw rolled the arm over. Maybe he shouldn't again. None for 11 off one. Hasaranga, who is now the equal leading purple cap taker, which we will get into in a moment. Purple Patel. Only bowled the one over, which 
I'd love someone to make that make sense to me, especially when you bowl someone like Siddharth Cool four overs, you bowl Maxwell four overs, but you and you bowl Lomroar one over, but you can only bowl. You, in my opinion, your second best bowler. Oh, that's actually maybe third to Hasaranga. But one of your best bowlers, one of the best bowlers in the competition, only bowled the one over. I don't know why that was, but hey, they got the win, so I guess it doesn't matter. But hey, um, that's that. So a total of 168 to chase down to get the W. I mean, it was a pretty chaseable total. It was a pretty dry, flat deck. I mean, decent for spinners, but as long as you got going early... It was a pretty good deck for batting, um, especially batting second, which RCB took full advantage of. The man Virat Kohli and Faf Duplessis with this opening partnership. We have been yet to see it all season flourish and work how we all thought it would. And there you go, 73 from Virat, 44 from the man Faf Duplessis. That is what this all-class two legends at the top of the order can produce. Now, are they going to produce it during the playoffs? If they make it, let's hope. Um, or let's let's wait and see. And you just want to talk about finishing off an innings in style. The big show, Glenn Maxwell, 40 off 18 off four, uh, five fours, two sixes. And guess what? The strike rate, two for two, two, two. So, hey, just to, just to, oh, sorry. Not the end of the innings. Dinesh Kartik, not out. Two off two. Inspirational. Arguably won them the game. Um, without DK, they probably get bowled out after that. So, Really inspirational for, for DK to hold strong there at the end. Um, yeah, great. Great stuff. All right. The Gujarat Titan bowlers. There's not a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing to talk about except for Rashid Khan. Two for 32 off four. That's what he does. There's nothing, there's nothing surprising about that. And as I spoke about with Lockie Ferguson, he bowled 1.4 overs. And got hit for 21 runs. So that's just that's just kind of why. Like, you know, guys like him, Alzari Joseph. It's just why I'm never massive fans of bowlers who do nothing but bowl short and bowl wide, mid-length deliveries. I just don't like it. Um, I mean, I hope he can, you know, get a couple of tricks into his bag. You know, a couple of slower balls, off-pace deliveries, a couple of cutters if you need to. Like... All he does is bowl bounces and bowl full-length wide deliveries. Like, I just don't get it. You have to have a bit of variation, especially in the IPL where batsmen are capable of hitting it 360 degrees nowadays. But, hey, RCB, they get the win pretty comfortable in the end with about two overs remaining. It was, it was pretty simple stuff in the end. Let's go to the table. This is the most important thing right now. The Titans, LSG, Rajasthan, locked in. You can lock them away. They're in. RCB now into fourth. It all relies on Delhi Capitals versus the Mumbai Indians tomorrow. So the rest of these teams, whatever. Punjab, we missed the playoffs again. I'm not surprised. Uh, <laughs> I'm not surprised. So you see here, tonight we have Rajasthan versus CSK. This means nothing. Um, I mean, if Rajasthan can win, then I guess that's good momentum going into the finals. But that's about it. Um, but the big match is tomorrow. Mumbai Indians versus the Delhi Capitals. If Mumbai win, RCB will be in the top four. DC win. They jump over RCB once again, and they will play playoffs. It's either Ricky Ponting's DC versus Faf Duplessis' RCB now. Hey, shit. I mean, it, it, this is all you can really ask for towards the end of the season. Two teams that are deciding results on who's going to make the playoffs. It's exciting, um, you know, which is good for the for the fans to hopefully get back involved and hopefully Virat, you know, making a big score has gotten a lot of people interested again and a lot more people are going to come back to the IPL and start watching it for the playoffs if Virat makes it, of course. But um, yeah, I mean, I I don't care who makes it to be honest. Neither of them are my team. I just want great playoffs. Um, I love RCB. I love Daly Capitals. I love both teams. So I don't mind who makes it, in my opinion. Um, but hey, it's coming right down to the end. The orange cap. Yeah, it's over. Um, the purple cap, though, is not over. Not by a long shot. Hasarunga and the man Yuzi Chahal equal first on 24 wickets. Chahal has one game remaining tonight. 
Hasaranga. He's done. No more games for him. So if Yuzi Chahal can take one wicket, he will be the orange cap. Uh, orange cap. He will be the purple cap leader. And he probably will win it. Unless Rabada or Malik or Kuldeep can take, you know, six fizz or seven fizz in their next game. Yuzi just needs one more wicket to just seal it up and, and take the orange uh, the purple cap, which he's been amazing all season. Um, but hey, that will cap it off. A great win for RCB. Fate is out of their hands now. They've done everything they can. It is up to DC versus the Mumbai Indians. It's going to be an absolute thrilling nail-biting game. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, that will cap it off. Coley's back on the run board. RCB are in the top four for now. Hey, I hope everyone enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on the game, and I'll see everyone in the next one.